Hey there everybody. In this lecture we're going to look at three things. First we're going to check out some Idaho state and local laws relating to UAS flights. Second, we'll go over policies and rules for flying drones at the University of Idaho. And third, we're going to take a look at what's involved in flying drones on public lands. So if you're ready, let's get started. So far, we've focused mainly on the federal regulations that govern flying drones, mostly from Part 107. But depending on where you're flying, there may be other laws or rules that come into play. It's important to keep in mind, though, that these rules exist in a hierarchy. The state of Idaho, for example, can create additional rules that limit drone flights, but they can't pass a law that contradicts one of the federal laws. For example, Idaho cannot pass a law that says it's okay to fly your drone over 400 feet above the ground here. Likewise, cities, counties, or organizations like the university can add restrictions, but they can't go against anything at the state or federal level. So let's start off by taking a look at the state and local laws that relate to flying drones in the great state of Idaho. As of the beginning of 2020, there are two laws on the books in the Idaho Code that pertain to drones. The first relates to drone flights and use in general, and the second relates to the use of drones in hunting. The state maintains a website on aircraft and drones where they list the pertinent laws. The second link on this slide is for a page by the UAVCoach.com website, which is actually a really great resource for doing initial research on drone laws by state and for a bunch of different countries. Section 21.213 of the Idaho Code is on restrictions on the use of unmanned aircraft systems. This section has a lot in it, and if you're going to be flying in Idaho under FAA Part 107 rules, it would be a good idea to actually read the whole section. The important part of this section is the part that states that no person, entity, or state agency may photograph, surveil, or collect evidence on any person or private property without their consent or without a warrant. This includes farms and ranches. And basically, you can't photograph or record a person or their property without their consent if your intent is to gather information on them or to distribute the photos or recordings. There are exceptions for emergencies, for search and rescue, and for controlled substance investigations. Because really, what genius is going to give somebody permission to fly over their pot farm and take a bunch of photos? The other thing to note here is that breaking this section is a civil offense. You can't go to jail for it, but the person or property owner can sue you for $1,000 or the actual damages plus attorney fees. The other Idaho section relating to drones is section 361101. This section is about prohibited methods of take for wildlife and it bans the use of drones for hunting or harassing wildlife. This includes using drones for spotting or locating animals and relaying that information back to hunters on the ground. Violating this section is a criminal offense and in addition to losing your hunting license you could be fined or sentenced to jail time. In Idaho, there are two counties that have ordinances that impose additional restrictions on drone flights. Ada County's ordinance is very similar to Idaho Section 23213, except that it makes it a criminal misdemeanor offense to photograph or record people without their permission and establishes a fine for it. In Canyon County, it's a criminal offense to fly drones in county parks without the permission of the director of the Parks Department. And that's it for Idaho state and local laws restricting drone flights, at least for now. It's quite possible, maybe even likely, that in the future we'll see additional laws passed related to drone flights in Idaho. So it's always a good idea to check periodically before you fly to see if anything has changed. Now let's look at what it takes to fly drones at the University of Idaho. Keep in mind that these policies and rules are specific to UI and any other university will have their own rules related to drones. At the University of Idaho, drone flights are pretty tightly regulated. This is in an effort to mitigate risks of damage to property or injury to people from drone crashes. Any drone flights for U of I business purposes are authorized by the Office of Research Assurances. Drone flights for personal or recreational use are handled separately. 
at the university the policies that lay out how drone flights are authorized and are conducted are described in the Administrative Procedures Manual, Section 4535. In Policy Section 4535, it says, No use of UAS may be undertaken by university faculty, staff, students, or third parties, that includes consultants and contractors, acting on behalf of the university without, one, prior review by the UAS committee, two, approval by the vice president for research and economic development, and three, if necessary, approval by the FAA of a certificate of authorization. Now, it's important to note that this policy applies to all drone flights related to U of I business purposes, and that includes research, teaching, or other university operations like facilities maintenance, marketing, or communications. Let's look at the UAS committee first. The UAS committee is an ad hoc university committee that reports to the vice president for research and economic development. The UAS committee exists to help ensure that UI drone operations follow FAA rules, university policies, and other laws, and that the flights minimize risk to the extent possible. The UAS committee reviews proposed flights and makes a recommendation to the vice president for research on whether to allow flights based on factors like legality, risk, and benefits. The UAS committee, though, does not in itself have the ability to authorize flights, but only to make recommendations to the vice president, who is the one that actually issues the authorization. Here's the current structure for the UAS committee. Brad Ritz is the acting vice president for research, and he oversees the committee and signs the actual authorizations. Dan Lahan is the University UAS Compliance Officer and he keeps track of all the flight authorizations and takes care of drone registrations and any special FAA waivers or airspace authorizations that might be needed. The committee itself has three regular members. I'm the current chair of the committee and Dr. Jay Rue from the College of Agriculture and Dr. Jan Eidel from the College of Natural Resources down at the McCall Outdoor Science School are the other two members of the committee. There are two alternate members, Drs. Shafian and Durgesh, and they substitute in when one of the regular committee members is out or when one of us submits a request for drone flights. In other words, I can't approve my own request to fly. To get approval from the committee and the vice president for research, you need to submit a UAS application. This is pretty easy, actually, and you just need to provide information about your project and who's going to be flying. The university requires that all flights have at least one Part 107 licensed pilot and that you have written permission from the landowner or manager where you're going to be flying. You'll also need to describe any special communications or safety procedures you'll take to mitigate risks. UAS applications can be for a single flight or project, or if you're going to be doing recurring flights, you can request a blanket authorization for a longer period of time. The university requires liability insurance for all drone flights, no matter the size of the drone. No insurance, no flying. All university-owned drones are insured through the state of Idaho. Even a tiny little $20 drone from Walmart should be insured. Anyone who's not part of the university, like a contractor, or a student flying their own drone for university purposes, needs to be able to show proof of insurance before they can fly for University of Idaho. Personal use of drones at the University of Idaho is handled under a different policy section and does not go through the Office of Research Assurances. Personal or recreational use of drones on campus or any University of Idaho property is not allowed unless specifically permitted by the Office of Public Safety and Security. If you ask me, this is a real wet blanket for recreational drone use, but it's the policy that exists right now, so we live with it. Requests to fly for fun or for activities like drone races are evaluated on a case-by-case -case basis. Whew, we made it through the university policies. That was a bit of a slog, but hopefully it gives you a better understanding of how to stay out of trouble when flying at the U of I. Now let's pivot and we're going to look at flying on public lands. Idaho is 60% public land and some of the coolest places to fly in the state are on BLM forest or state lands. The main thing to keep in mind if you want to fly on public lands is that the rules are going to vary by agency and depending on whether you're flying for fun or for business purposes under Part 107. 
Generally, drone flights are allowed on public lands unless there are rules in place to specifically forbid it. Some notable exceptions are for special management areas like national parks, monuments, or refuges. Even then, if you're doing research that requires drone flights, it is possible to get permission to fly even in restricted areas. It may not be easy, but it is possible. The main takeaway message here is that you should always check before you fly. And if you're flying for work or research purposes, it's good practice to alert the land managers that you're going to be flying. This is just like if we were going to be out in the field collecting field data on public lands, we'll give the local manager a courtesy call and let them know we're going to be there. The majority of public lands in Idaho are administered by the U.S. Forest Service or the Bureau of Land Management, or BLM. Drone flights are generally permitted on Forest Service or BLM lands for pilots flying under Part 107 rules. Be aware, though, that flight restrictions may be in place for areas with special management designations, like national re recreation areas, or around management activities like aerial seeding or spraying. Drone flights are prohibited on all lands administered by the National Park Service. This includes national parks, monuments, historic sites, etc. You can get special permission to fly on Park Service lands for research or business purposes, but it's really pretty difficult to get. Like Park Service lands, drone flights are prohibited on all U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service lands. This includes refuges and hatcheries. Getting special permission to fly on Fish and Wildlife Service lands is, in my experience, possible, though if you can justify a research purpose and demonstrate that your drone flights will not disturb the wildlife. So what about areas that have been designated as wilderness under the 1964 Wilderness Act? Well, drones are considered mechanized vehicles and are not permitted in wilderness areas. While this technically applies only to taking off from, landing in, or operating your drone from within a wilderness area, the Forest Service strongly discourages any drone flights over wilderness areas. I know that the university will not approve any flights over wilderness areas even if the operator is outside the wilderness area at all times. Wilderness areas are also marked on the FAA sectional charts and in drone mission planning apps like AirMap so you can easily tell where the boundaries are. Wildfires are a fact of life now during Idaho summers. While it may be tempting to get some cool drone footage of a fire, unauthorized flights over wildfires are very much illegal and can land you in a whole lot of trouble. Unauthorized drone flights pose a risk to firefighting operations, and when a drone is spotted near a fire, all aerial firefighting activities must be grounded until the drone operator can be found or it can be confirmed that the drone is no longer around. Additionally, wildfires typically have a temporary flight restriction, or TFR, in place to keep air traffic away. So in addition to it being illegal to disrupt firefighting operations, you would also be in violation of airspace rules to fly your drone there. The last thing to talk about are drones and wildlife. Drones have become an important tool for wildlife research and management, but flying drones over wildlife can cause stress for the animals. Pursuing, disturbing, or harassing wildlife is illegal no matter how you do it, and it's really easy to do it with a drone if you're not careful. As we saw with the Idaho state laws, many states and state fish and game agencies have regulations that limit the use of drones around fish and wildlife. In general, you should make sure you're 100 meters or more from wildlife before launching your drone, and make sure that you don't approach animals vertically where they may not be able to see or expect to see your drone. Also, if you have encounters with aggressive birds when flying your drone, you should stop flying until the bird or you can move someplace else. Well, that's it for our discussion of state and local laws and regulations relating to drone flights. I hope this has given you a better understanding of where and how you can fly your drone, and hopefully it'll help keep you out of trouble. Thanks for watching, and let me know if you have any questions or comments.